for the record, we'd like to chair recognizes the presence of Senator Sherwin Gatsalian. Senator Sopo and uh, Zubiri will be joining us later. Again, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our source persons. Dean uh, Nilo T. Divina. Good morning, sir. Good morning, uh, Mr. Senator. Very Reverend uh, Father Herminio Dagohoy. Good po, Father. Director Maria Socorro Guanhing. UST Office for Student Affairs. Good po, ma. Mr. Arvin <coughs> Balag. <coughs> Nasa o sa Asia kanina? Bakit? Okay. He's being represented by Attorney Stanley Gutohyo. Mr. Mark Anthony Ventura. Around Mr. Ventura. Mr. Joshua Joriel Makabili. Birthday. Sir Jason Adolfo Robinos. Present, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Morning. Morning. Sir Jason Adolfo. Uh, Mr. Rani Rafael Santiago. Go around. Mr. Daniel Hans Matthew Rodrigo. Mr. Carl Matthew Villanueva. Mr. Aaron Salientes. Please uh, take the seat in front. Mr. Simon or this Simon Padro. Mr. Jose Miguel Salamat. Marcelino Bagtang. Mr. John Paul Solano. Good morning, po, Your Honor. I'm morning. Ah, yeah. Nakilala. Sir Ralph Rangia. Morning, po, Your Honor. Morning. Police Chief Superintendent uh, Joel Napoleon Coronel. Morning, Your Honor. Morning. Attorney Maria Cristina Layusa. Morning, ma'am. Prosecutor General uh, George Catalan. Good morning, Catalan. Good morning, good morning, uh, EG. Attorney Alan Christopher Agati. All the others who were called earlier, na hindi nagpunta rito. Kindly occupy the seats in front. Naka, naka highlight kayo rito na present eh. The chair acknowledges the presence of Senator Subiri and Senator uh, Grace Po. Magandang maga. This is the resumption of the hearing of the joint public hearing on the privileged speech of the Honorable Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri on the death of Horacio Atio Castillo III due to hazing delivered on September 20, 2017 and the legislative measures concerning amendments to the anti-hazing law. The 
committee is in receipt of a letter from Mr. John Paul Solano dated October 18, stating among others, his appeal to reconsider the resolution adopted by the Senate as a body authorizing to make public his testimony during the executive session last September 25. While the reasons stated here are well taken, uh, as per our rules, only a uh, sitting senator who voted in favor of the resolution may file a motion for reconsideration within an 80, uh, a 48-hour period. So, and of course, we'll respect your decision now and maybe later to invoke your right against self-incrimination. That's your basic right. Uh, with that, we'd like to hear from the proponent, the main author of that resolution, Senator uh, Mixubiri. Your comment, sir. Thank you, Chairman Lakson, the members of the committee. I want to address my question to Mr. Solano. Mr. Solano, ginagago mo ba ang aming committee? Uh, no, Your Honor. Are you, do you, are you, or do you want to disrespect our committee? No, Your Honor. Well, let me put on record the many instances where you testified right there on that seat that during the preliminary investigation of this uh, incident, you many times in your last sworn statement here in the committee said that you will release your sworn statement of what had transpired that morning when Acho Castillo had died. Now I ask you again. Ginagago mo ba yung committee na ito? Dahil dalawang beses na at ilang beses na po may panahon na pagbigay po ninyo ng inyong sinalaysay, sworn statement, or nakita dito dun sa nangyaring yung incident yun at hindi nyo ginawa. What is your reason? Uh, your Honor, with all due respect po, no, uh, may answer to that question is no po. Uh, uh, during October 4 po, I, I, am, I am ready to present my counter affidavit as well as to prescribe my witnesses that time. Uh, what happened was beyond my control. Uh, the complainants uh, uh, manifested that they would, uh, they would submit a supplemental uh, affidavit or complaints that time. So they, they prayed the, for the, uh, for the uh, hearing to be moved. So that time, uh, uh, that time I did not uh, uh, filed my counter affidavit due to the fact that they would, uh, they would uh, put or add a supplemental complaint. So I am still begging your honor that you give me some some time uh, after the 24 that I would file my count, uh, counter affidavit. I will furnish you a copy of Chairman. my sworn. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, many times during the committee hearing and in the executive section, the uh, gentleman, Mr. Solano, had promised the committee, promised the members of this honorable body that he wants to set, he wants to tell the truth and set it right. What I am worried for about, Mr. Chairman, that in the span of the two to three weeks that had transpired, it seems that things have changed. His mood has changed. As a matter of fact, for the record, when this individual, Your Honor, this uh, uh, colleague of yours had gone to so many interviews, we had been bashed. The Senate had been bashed and accused of a cover-up itself by allowing the testimony in executive session and not releasing it to the media and to the public. As a matter of fact, in one interview in DZMM, tinanong po ako ni Ma'am Karen Davila, na hindi kaya kung mo-cover up din po kayo dahil alam nyo nang po ang pangalan at binanggit na po sa inyo ni Mr. Solano kagabi. And I told her that we must respect the rules of executive session, but what is important is that the committee knows the truth. And we can actually cite you in contempt or not abiding by the promises that you made during executive session. But you know, Your Honor, 
I believe that citing him in contempt and detaining him in the Senate is a useless exercise. I don't even think we should spend one centavo to feed this gentleman for lying to us. It's not worth it. Under our rules, Mr. Chairman, under Section 28, as Section 128, the President as well as the Senators and officials and employees of the Senate shall absolutely refrain from divulging any of the confidential matters taken up by the Senate and all proceedings which might have taken place in the Senate in connection with the said matters shall be likewise considered as strictly confidential until the Senate by two-thirds vote, or in this case 16 members, of all its members decides to lift the ban of secrecy. When I approached all of you last week, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman, it was unanimous, Mr. Solano. All the members of the Senate, although Senator Grace at that time, she was uh, not feeling well, she was sick. She had uh, told me that she's in full support of the resolution. And even Senator Laila de Lima had said that she would have signed. And that's why we're putting that on record. To release your testimony to the public so that we will no longer cover up any uh, injustice done to the Castillo family. So now, Mr. Solano, I ask you one more time. I asked you this during the committee hearing. Believe that the truth shall set you free. May I answer? Yes, Your Honor. We give you one more chance. Are you willing in this hearing today to release your sworn statement at ibigay dito, point by point, what had happened and transpired that morning. By your honor, with all due respect po, no, I am bound uh, due to the cases that I've filed again. And there's an ongoing preliminary investigation. I would invoke my right against self -inclined. Well, Mr. Solano, you kept invoking that right because you were being processed inquest proceedings. And I clearly recall you said, in our... A hearing, Senator Lacson and Senator Sherwin Gachalian were there at that time and said, including your lawyer, had said, Bawiin lang nila yung inquest proceeding, magpile sila ng preliminary investigation, ibibigay namin kaagad ang aming sworn statement. Very proud kayo nun. And your lawyer. Clearly, with uh, one more uh, witness, Senator Bam Aquino, together with the stenographers and members of the Senate staff. So I ask you one more time, are you willing? Two preliminary investigations have transpired. Are you willing to divulge to this committee what had happened and transpired that morning during the death of Acho Castillo? Uh, Your Honor, that time when I said that when they filed the preliminary investigation, if they would file that uh, cases outright, I would submit my counter affidavit, but what happened is, again, it's beyond my control. They manifested to move it. Oh, Your, your Honor, Honor, I don't believe it's beyond your control. Ginagago mo lang talaga kami. I think you were prevailed upon by your brothers. If I'm, if I, I'm sure that is what had transpired. And therefore, Mr. Chairman, let's forget this. Uh, let's uh, uh, no longer allow this um, the disrespect of this committee. And I move to release the testimony of Mr. Solano that he had given during executive session, uh, authored and uh, approved by 21 members of this honorable body. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Before we act on the motion, Senator Gachalian is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Solano, uh, executive um, session natin, paulit-ulit mong sinabing na gusto mo itong mag-cooperate. In fact, natatandaan ko yung sinabi mong pero noong October 9, 2017, file ka ng motion to quash. Quash search warrant and exclude illegally seized personal properties, documents, and evidence. Bakit mo gustong itapon yung mga ebidensya na makakahanap ng katotohanan? O mag-cooperate, Pulong, pero nakapagtaka, 
yung mga ebidensya na makakatulong maghanap ng katotohanan at hustisya para kay Acho ay gusto mong itapon. Kaya kami po ay nadidismaya dahil iba-iba yung sinasabi mo. Sa action mo, iba yung lumalabas sa bibig mo, pero iba rin yung ginagawa mo. Kaya sana pag-isipan mo mabuti ito dahil during the executive session, talagang madetalye naman yung binigay mo. At ito lang ang makakatulong tayo para uh, para ito ang makakatulong kay, sa iyo at makakatulong sa Castillo family makahanap ng hukum. Uh, sana pag-isipan mo mabuti ito dahil marami tayong gustong tumulong at alam ko gusto mo rin tumulong. Senator Grace Poch, recognized. Magandang umaga, Mr. Chair, at sa inyong lahat. Nang una, hindi po ito magiging kauna-unahang pagkakataon kung saan ilalabas ang mga iminungkahi ng executive session. Nagkaroon na rin po tayo ng ganyang klaseng sitwasyon kung nagkaroon ng mamasapan ng hearing kung saan ilan din pong executive session ang ginanap pero ang mga Pinag-usapan doon ay inilabas namin. Ang hindi lang namin nilabas ay ang pangalan ng mga informants at assets on the ground dahil ang kanilang kaligtasan ay maaaring makom makompormiso. Pero inilabas natin sapagkat ang Senado ay may kapangyarihan talaga pag ito ay pinagbotohan ng mga membro na ilabas ito, kortesiya na naghintay kami ng iyong salaysay Uh, at ang iyong sinabi na sana bigyan ka muna ng pagkakataon. Pero sa tingin ko, ilang araw na rin napalugit ang ibinigay namin at hindi mo ito natupad. Kaya sa tingin ko naman ay nasa tamang posisyon ng Senado na ilabas yan, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Comsec, you are directed to administer the oath to those who have not been administered their oath. Please stand up. Mga bagong dumating lang. I request those resource persons who were not present during the last hearing to stand. Please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the Senate inquiry. Thank you. Your Honors, uh, with your indulgence, again, before we act on the motion, I think it's but proper to hear first or the committee be informed uh, of the status of the preliminary investigation. So with that, uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Prosecutor General uh, Jun Catalan. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Your Honor. Um, the preliminary investigation is uh, being conducted by a panel of prosecutors, namely Assistant State Prosecutor Susan Nueva, who is present, uh, Prosecution Attorney Wendell Bendoval, and Prosecution Attorney Hani Rose Delgado. Uh, the case title or docket is MPD or Manila Police Department does spouses Horacio and Carmina Castillo versus John Paul Solano et al. Uh, NPS docket number X51 uh, does INQ does 171 does 00124. The criminal charges are 1. Article 248 of the Revised Penal Code for murder, 2. Article 183 of the Revised Penal Code, false testimony in other cases and perjury in solemn affirmation. Number three, Article 293 of the Revised Penal Code, robbery. And number four, Section 4 of, of Republic Act, number 8049, the anti-hazing law. The preliminary investigation was conducted last October 4, 2017 at 2 o'clock the DOJ executive meeting room. A total of 18 respondents were issued subpoena. Counsels uh, for complainant, spouses Castillo, attorney Lorna Capunan, and attorney Lino Capunan appeared. Complainant uh, Manila Police District likewise appeared. Respondents John Paul Solano 
and Jason Rubinos appeared with their respective councils. Other respondents did not appear but were represented by their respective councils. Respondents Oliver Onofre, Daniel Hans Matthew Rodrigo, and the same Miguel Salamat did not appear. Neither were they represented by council. Council for Respondents Solano submit, submitted a motion to strike out from the records the judicial affidavit executed by Respondent Solano dated September 17, 2017 for alleged irregularity and inadmissibility. Complainants manifested that they will submit additional evidence and uh, supplemental complaint the next scheduled hearing. Last October 9, 2017, complainant spouses Castillo appeared uh, with counsels uh, Lorna Kapunan and Attorney Kapunan and Attorney Lino Kapunan. Uh, only respondents John Paul Solano and Jason Adolfo Ribinos appeared in the hearing. All other respondents who were not present are duly represented by the respective councils. Uh, Manila Police Department also filed their comment on the motion to strike the judicial affidavit of Respondent Solano. The said motion is now submitted for resolution. Several witnesses for the complainant subscribed and took their oath on the respective affidavit Sinumpaang Salaysay before the undersigned investigating, uh, before the investigating panel of prosecutors. Complainant spouses Castillo submitted two supplemental complaint affidavits for violation of RA 8049 or anti-hazing law and Article 248 uh, murder. Article 183, number two, for perjury and PD 1829, obstruction of justice. Same affidavits were subscribed and sworn to before the said panel of prosecutors. Additional 25 new respondents were charged, including Dean uh, Nilo Divina and other officers of the AG's Juris Foundation, Inc. Um, the uh, next scheduled hearing is set on October 24, where in submission of counter affidavits and controverting evidence by all respondents, including those newly added in the supplemental complaint. Subpoena were attached to the copies of the complaint issued to the newly uh, added respondents for the said uh, hearing, which is set October 24. Submission of uh, supplemental counter affidavits for all of the respondents is also set on October 30. Um, although on October 11, 2017, respondent Alvin Disanco, the only other respondent included in the supplemental complaint, filed his counter affidavit in the office of Assistant State Prosecutor Susan Villanueva. Um, I uh, talked with uh, Assistant State Prosecutor Villanueva and uh, uh, the panel would uh, request for uh, extension of time uh, in conducting this uh, preliminary investigation, of course, because uh, the numerous uh, respondents in this case. Also, uh, I am sure that uh, reply affidavits and uh, rejoinder affidavits will also be uh, filed by the uh, parties. Uh, unless uh, or at the discretion of the panel, uh, questions which are qualificatory in nature could, only be, could also be asked. That is all, Your Honor. Thank you, PG Catalan. We go back to the previous uh, question. There's a motion to... There's a motion to allow the chair to lift the ban on secrecy of the proceedings uh, of the executive session held last September 25, thereby making public the testimony of John Paul Solano. Is there uh, any objection? Hearing none, then the motion is approved. Senator Subiri, please. I believe we have a presentation to make, uh, Chairman. Your committee had prepared the uh, presentation for you. Yes, Senate. But I'd like to ask uh, Prosecutor General Catalan, George Catalan, 
in the in the interview today of uh, Secretary Aguirre, made mention that it is a welcome development that this can be used as evidence against uh, the gentleman named. Um, can you utilize this sworn statement during executive session? Can you utilize this uh, uh, this uh, testimony to help you in the case against uh, this gentleman on the death of Acho Castillo? Uh, I'm not a privy, Your Honor, to the uh, interview or the... Although, uh, as to the question was, as to whether or not the <coughs> testimony could be made as evidence, I am sure, Your Honor, that uh, we can utilize the same as... Yes, because for the record, many, uh, um, many results of public hearings in the Senate have been utilized in cases whether in the RTC, Court of Appeals, and even up to the Supreme Court. It's used, been utilized, used as evidence to help bolster a particular case. So uh, let us proceed, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Statement of John Paul Solano, September 25, 2017, Executive Session. Narration of events, morning of September 17. Mr. Solano, so the morning of Sunday po, I was not home, 6.30, may tumawag po sa akin. His name is O.J. Onofre, Oliver John Onofre. That's the first call na dumating po sa akin. So, syempre, sabi ko, hindi ako pwede because every Saturday and Sunday, I work at my father's clinic. My shift would start at 7 o'clock in the morning. Clear. Is Mr. Uh, Oliver John no no pre present? Saan po kayo? Kindly occupy the seat in front. You've been administered your oath, diba? So, do you confirm this uh, testimony of, this part of the testimony of uh, John Paul Solano, that you called him up uh, in, this, in the morning of Sunday, September, that's September 17, diba? Yeah, do you confirm that? Are you assisted by, by counsel? Sige, pakitanong mo yung counsel mo muna. By the way, uh, Mr. Counsel, kindly state for the record your name, And which law firm you are uh, representing? Your I'm attorney Francisco Munez. Representing. Are you a member of uh, AJF? Are you a member of uh, AJS Juris? You're asking me, Your Honor? Opo. Yes, Bob. Okay. Sige. Uh, Oliver, or OJ, do you confirm this portion of the testimony of Mr. John Paul Solano. With all due respect, Your Honor. Okay. Sige, clear. Proceed. Noong first, ang tumawag sa akin, ang sabi niya is, Brad, punta ka dito sa Frat Library. Calmly. Sabi ko, bakit? Basta, punta ka. Sabi ko, hindi ako pwede kasi may trabaho ako dito sa clinic namin. Sabi ko, try mo na lang yung iba kung may pupunta dyan na malapit if ever, sabi ko. So, binaba niya. After that, while preparing my things for that shift in the morning sa clinic, tumawag siya ulit around 7.15 or 7.10 in the morning. Sabi ko, Brad, bakit? Sabi niya, Brad, kailangan ka talaga namin. Pumunta ka dito. Ano ba kasi ang nangyari, sabi ko. Sabi niya, Brad, may nag-collapse. Sabi ko, sinong nag-collapse? Basta pumunta ka. 
So my sense of urgency na so that I took the initiative na pumunta na. So around 7.30 or 7.40, kinuha ko yung motor ko na. Umalis na ako ng bahay. So mayroon din akong text message sa kapatid ko, yung younger sister ko. Sabi ko, Jen, pakisabi kay daddy, aalis ako ng maaga. Sabi ko, baka tanghali na ako bumalik. Yun ang sabi ko. So around 8.10 or 8.15, I arrived at the frat library. So pagdating ko po doon, I opened the door. I knocked muna. So tiningnan nila na ako iyong dumating. I opened the door. I found Asho was lying. By that time, hindi ko makonfirm na siya yon. Sabi ko, sino ito? Pangalan, whore. Because sa basic po ng first aid, paglapag ninyo po, kailangan ninyo siyang sigawan at tawagin sa name niya. So, SOP po yun. So, sabi ko, whore. Whore, is that you? Sabi ko, whore, naririnig mo ba ako? So, I was slapping him on the face. Tapos, tiningnan ko yung police niya. Yung pupils niya, it's very dilated. Sabi ko, walang response. Nag-check ako ng pulse, wala. The first time, wala. Nag-check ako ulit. Yung pangalawa, sabi ko, baka yung pulse ko na iyong nar nararamdaman ko. Kasi na i-stress na ako. So, parang takot na rin po ako. Chinect ko, yung respiratory, wala. Doon ko nasabi na mag-a-administer ako ng CPR. So I called one brad na nandoon. His name is Axel Hipe. Excuse me, clear. Sir Alex Mundo Hipe, kindly occupy the seat in front. Are you assisted by counsel? Sige. And for the record, uh, ano pong pangalan ng counsel ninyo? Maybe the, the lawyers, the counsels can uh, just uh, sit at the back of your uh, clients. Pa-provide nyo na lang ng upuan. Good morning, Your Honor. I'm Attorney Nina Herschelica Carandang from Tolentino, Carvera, Makasait, and the Iglo Office, Your Honor. Are you a member of sorority? No, Your Hindi Honor. Po. Yeah. Um, oh, Alex, I mentioned your name in the testimony. Do you confirm this uh, testimony? I'm sorry, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to confirm. Thank you. There, proceed. Sino yung dinatnan mo doon? Ang nagbukas po sa akin ng pinto si Axel Hipe. Mr. Axel Hipe. Pagdating ko po doon, ang nandoon po si Arvin Balag. Excuse me. Mr. Arvin Balag? Yes. Same. Same question. Are you assisted by counsel? Yes, sir. Kindly identify yourselves. Dalawa yung counsels mo. Please. The record. Good morning, Your Honors. Attorney Robespierre with Attorney Stanley Gotohio, respectfully appearing as counsel for Mr. Arvin Balag. Which law firm? Uh, Broto, U and Gotohio law offices. Are you also members of uh, IGES juries? Fraternity? No, Your Honor. In the, thank you. So, uh, Alvin, Arvin, please. Do you confirm the statement of uh, John Foster? With due respect, Foster? Your Honor, I invoke my right against it. Thank you. Did. He was on the phone with someone I don't know. O.J. Onofre. Next. Mark Ventura and also Axel Heap. Sir Ventura, are you present? Please come forward. Sama na yung counsel. And again, for the record, uh, Mr. Counsel, kindly identify yourself. Morning, Your Honors. I'm Attorney Rolito. Which Proud. law firm? Being a Brinicada court. And are you a member of uh, IGES juries? Record? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Mark? Mark? Yeah, kindly respond to this. Uh... Thank you. Those were the four na sumalubong po sa akin. 
nandoon sa yung ibang question, yung iba umalis na, wala na yung iba. I was not sure that time kasi dalawa po yung room nung AG's juries. Si Jason nandoon siya, yung Jason Robinios. Wala po siya kasi before noong week po na yon na confine siya. Kilala mo si Tranguia? Opo. Kilala mo ba yung face? Opo. So, wala siya doon. Pero yung sasakyan niya nandoon. Excuse me. Sir uh, Tranguia? Sir around? Uh, ikaw? Again, you're assisted by counsel. Yeah, kindly identify yourself. Or ni Chris Gargantiel for Ralph Tranguia. So, From firm? Gargantiel, Ilagan, and Atanante. And you, are you a member of Aegis Juris? No. No, Your Honor. Ralph Kindly respond to. Do you confirm this? With all due respect, Your Honor, I invoke my. Thank you. Question. So, wala siya doon, pero yung sasakyan niya nandoon, hindi ko po ma-confirm na kung wala po siya doon. Question. Hindi mo siya, Rangia, nakita? Opo, yung kasama ko lang po, kasi yung apat na yon, tapos tumawag lang po ng dalawang bagong brad. So, ang alam ko lang po sa kanila is names nila. It is Zach and Dan. So, hindi ko po Excuse alam me, yung sir. surname. Sir Zachary Abulen, Abulencia, are you around? And Daniel Ragos. They're not around. Please proceed. Where they issued subpoena? Uh, I'd like to ask the ComSec, you know, yung mga na issue ng subpoena, are they all present? They're all present. Okay, proceed. So, iyon po. So, nung nag-affirm na po lahat na, sige, pupunta tayong ospital. Ang sabi ni Arvin Balag, Chinese gen na lang. Sabi ko, bakit Chinese gen? Doon na lang kasi, sabi niya. So, he insisted. So, sabi ko, sige, doon tayo. Question. Distance-wise, ano ang difference ng doon from the frat live compared kung UST hospital? Sir Solano, mga 10 to 15 minutes na po ang UST depending on the traffic. Question. Yung Chinese general, Mr. Solano, 20 to 30 minutes if there is traffic mga 40. Opo, to CGH. So going to CGH, nung wala namang nangyari masyado, it's about, I think, 20 to 30 minutes na travel po. Pagdating sa CGH, nasa parking lot po muna kami nagpunta. Since sila yung nauuna, sumusunod lang ako, sa parking lot nagpunta. Sabi ko, Brad, doon tayo sa emergency room. Sabi niya, balag. Ganon. Sige, dalhin mo na. Sabi ko, bakit ako? Hindi naman ako kasali dito. Kayo ang magdala. Hindi, ikaw na ang magdala. Ang sabi ko, teka, tatanong ko muna kung papaano. Lumapit po ako sa nurse station. Ang sabi ko, ma'am, may emergency po kami. Bakit? Ano ba ang nangyari? Pakitingin na lang po muna. Ah, hindi pa pala yun ang nangyari. So, ang nangyari pa po pala, tinanong ko kung ano ang sasabihin ko. Since wala po akong idea, ang sabi ko, anong sasabihin ko? Sabi ni Arvin Balag, sabihin mo na pulot mo sa balutondo. Since sobrang taranta ko na po na ako yung magdadala, nag-mental block na yung utak ko, hindi na ako makapag-isip. Sige, susunod na lang ako. Sabi ko, sige, go. Sabi ko, ma'am, may emergency po kami. Anong nangyari? Napulot ko lang po sa balutondo, hindi ko po alam. Sabi kong ganon. So, lumala, lumabas sila. Sabi, nako sir, dapat may maiwan dyan kung ano. Nung nandun pa lang po sa may door, sabi niya, nasa na? Andun pa po sa parking lot. Dalhin mo dito, sabi niya. Teka po, papupuntahin ko. Kaso sir, dapat may maiwan dyan. So, along the way, noong pumunta po ako doon, kasi ang parking po noong pick up at saka noong fortuner is ganito, Tapos nandito po iyong door. Tinanong ko si Arvin, sabi ko, Brad, kailangan daw may maiwan. Sabi niya, ikaw na maiwan. 
e bakit ako? Labas nga ako dito eh. Sabi niya ang ganon. Alangan naman kami. Sabi ng ganon. Sabi niya, balag. Ikaw na. Sabi niya, hindi naman yan maipapasok kung walang maiiwan. E di kayo maiwan. Hindi, ikaw na. Hindi kami magpapaiwan dyan. So out of gusto ko rin tulungan yung bata. Nagpaiwan na ako. Sabi ko, sige. I said some obscene word pero hindi ko na sasabihin kasi minura ko talaga sila. Sabi ko, sige sir, dalhin mo na doon. Halika na. Sabi kong ganon. So di na la po doon yung pick up. Tinabi po yung stretcher. Ako rin po nagbuhat at saka yung dalawang nurse. Pinuhat namin palabas. Tapos sabi ko doon sa driver, Sir, umalis ka na. Malamang kapag nadamay ka, magsasalita ka excuse me, agad. Excuse me. Si Ralph Tanguia, anong pangalan ng driver mo? Yung family driver? Mm. Sabihin you'll invoke your right against self-incrimination. Anong pangalan ng driver ninyo? Romeo Laboga po. Ha? Romeo Laboga. Romeo Laboga. Laboga. Mr. Chairman, may we invite him in the next hearing? Yes, uh, Comsec is uh, directed to invite, including the two that I mentioned earlier, uh, Sakari Abulencia and Daniel Ragos. Thank you. Sabi kong ganon, hindi ba so malamang ilaglag mo kaming lahat? Sabi ko, hindi naman ako kasali dito. Question, sabi mo kay Mr. Solano, doon po sa driver, ang sabi ko, baka mamaya ilaglag mo ako dito. Alam mo namang wala akong kasalanan. De, sige sir. Question, mukha ba siyang driver or estudyante rin? Sir Solano, may edad po eh. More or less mga 30s or driver ni Tranguia po. Question, so yung driver po at saka ikaw, hindi pa yung mga brad yung tumulong po? Sir Solano, hindi po. Tapos after po noon, ipinasok na po si Asho. Pumasok na rin po ako. Siyempre, nilingon ko muna kung ano ang ginagawa nila. Uh, Mr. At how do you pronounce the name of uh, your son? Pronounce po as Atyo. Atyo. So, Claire, correct yourself. Siyempre, nilingon ko muna kung ano ang ginagawa nila. Umalis na sila. Iniwanan na akong mag-isa. So sabi ko, I am on my own. So sabi ko, in good faith na lang ang gagawin ko. Ibibigay ko lahat ng details ko dito sa ospital. So ang masakit pa sa akin, iniwan sa akin iyong katawan. Sa harap ko, nire-revive pa. Hindi ko na-revive. Hindi ko nagawa iyong talagang gagawin ko. Nirevive din nung doktor. Wala rin daw talaga. So doon na po ako, parang ang sabi ko, wala na. Hindi ko na-serve yung purpose ko ng pagpunta doon. Iwan pa ako ng mga brads ko, hindi ba? So sabi ko, there is no point to lie about my personal details, hindi ba? <coughs> Question. So doon mo na sinabi yung totoo doon sa hospital. Sir Solano, opo. Sabi ko, there is no point lying na din. Sabi ko, pagka nagsinungaling pa ako sa details ko, malamang lalo akong madidiin. Opo. So, in good faith, ibinigay ko lahat sa hospital. Tapos, yung story ng Balot Tondo, since hindi na ako makakaalis kapag wala akong ginawang story, ginawan ko na lang ng istorya. So, iyon na po yung sinabi kong istorya sa hospital. Dumating yung police ng police station 2, yun na rin yung sinabi kong story. Dumating yung homicide division, yun na rin yung sinabi kong story. Pinuntahan pa po namin ang homicide, so while driving my motorcycle, isip ko saan kaya dito sa Balot Tundo yung gagawin kong story. Yun nga po ang naisip ko rin. Ang naisip ko rin, sabi ko, aminin ko kuya, sabi ko, ay kaya, sabi ko, aminin ko kaya. Kaso yung perjury case ko is... Wala pong under oath yun. Talagang pinupush. Iniwanan po ako sa, nagpunta na po ako sa homicide. Kinuha yung statement ko, pero hindi ko po yun sinumpaan. Pinupush lang na sinumpaan ko daw, pero hindi. After po noon, pinauwi ako. 
Pag-uwi ko, sobrang hindi ko alam kung anong gagawin ko. Natatakot din ako sa parents ko since hindi ko masabi na may namatay, ganyan, bla bla bla. Tapos nandun ako, baka kung anong gawin sa akin ng tatay ko. Lumayas po ako sa amin. Question, ikaw ba yung nag-text doon sa parents? Mr. Solano, hindi po. Question, iba pa yung nag-text? Mr. Solano, iba pa po yung nag-text? Question. Clarification when he first met the parents of Castillo. Mr. Solano. Friday, sir. Question. Noon lang, pero sabi mo kilala mo, kilala ng father mo yung father ni ano. Mr. Solano. Opo, ni Dean Divina po. Question. Pero nakilala mo si Castillo prior? Mr. Solano, hindi po. Question. Bakit tinawag mong whore? Mr. Solano, tinanong ko po sila kung ano ang pangalan niya kasi SOP po lagi sa first aid. Solano in hiding, September 18 onwards. Sir Solano, opo, along the way po, nagpunta po ako sa MOA. Doon na po tumatawag sa akin iyong mga police. It's a Monday afternoon. Sabi kong ganon, sir, nasa MOA ako, ganyan. I made up stories na may kadil po ako, ganyan. Question, sinong kausap mo dito, Mr. Solano? Yung mga pulis po na tumatawag kasi iniwan ko po yung number ko sa kanila. Sabi niya, Sir, may ano lang, may follow-up investigation lang, ganyan, ganyan. Pero nasa isip ko, pagka nagpunta ako doon, hindi na ako makakabalik, sabi ko. Malamang custodial interrogation na itong mangyayari sa akin. So, andun po ako sa MOA, Nakakita po ako ng Victory Liner papuntang Tarlac City. Pumunta po akong Tarlac City along the way. Tinapon ko po yung cellphone ko kasi napakarami ng tumatawag sa akin na hindi ko kilala. Tapos na-force po ako na matulog sa mga waiting sheds, sa labas ng school, sa kung saan na. Ilang araw po, nakarating po ako ng Pangasinan. Moving lang po ako. Ayoko pong magstay sa isang city kasi pag may nakakilala sa akin, baka i-turn over ako. So pagkadating ko po sa isang city, sakaya ako agad ng jeep na papuntang baryo. Tapos doon po ako sa kalsada natutulog sa mga upuan sa labas ng school. Tapos noong mayroon po akong natirang last 700 pesos, pinambili ko ng cellphone. Tapos naka SIM card sabi ko, Dad, uwi na ako. Ayoko nang magtago. So, he contacted tat Tatay Divina, the father of Dean, who then contacted Dean and then contacted some brats to help me. Question, what day was this already? Sir Solano, this is me, Wednesday there, night. Uh, Dean, Dilo, will you confirm this? this part? Uh, yes, um, I spoke with my dad. Uh, the dad. My dad and the dad of uh, John are friends, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. This is Wednesday night. But, question, but Dean Divina, okay sa kanya na ilalabas mo iyong katotohanan? Did he encourage you? Mr. Solano, opo. Ako rin po nung sinabi po nilang si Attorney Pat iyong hahawak, siya po kaagad ang tinanong ko, magko-cover up ba tayo? Kasi kung magko-cover up, hindi kita kukuning abogado. Question. Naikwento mo ito kay... Sir, kay ni Ismakel, you're present. Will you confirm this? Please use the mic. I confirm that, Your Honor. And, in and you mentioned that also during the public hearing, hindi yes, ba? Yes, uh, Talaga sabi mo, wag tayo mag-cover up. Sabihin my, natin ang katotohanan my dito. My Thank you very much, uh, Question. Naikwento mo ito kay Dean? Mr. Solano, hindi pa po. Question. So, si attorney lang ang nakakaalam. Mr. Solano, opo. Question. Clarification why he surrendered to Senator Laxon. Mr. Solano, at saka ano po yata, nakasama ninyo rin po ang father ko sa panfilo din po ang father ko. CINP, kasama daw po kayo. Question, walang Brad na tumawag na itago natin to 
wala kang kinausap na Brad after that out of frustration, Sir Solano, wala po talagang tumawag sa aking Brad. May isa pong tumawag nung nasa hospital ako, si Yata. Brad, kumusta ka? Sabi niya. Anong nangyari? Sabi ko, Brad, hindi ko alam kung anong nangyari. Basta naipit ako sa hospital. Sabi ko sa kanya, okay, sabi niya. Akala ko hindi ka kasali. Sabi niya, there is a perception na hindi ko ako sumasali kasi anti-violence ako sa hazing. So, since day one, after nung naging Brad ako, hindi ako sumali sa mga initiation rites ng kahit sinong Brad. Question. So, ikaw ba yung sa Facebook? Ikaw yon, Mr. Solano, yung sa Popoy po, yung hinahanap po ako? Question. Ano ba yung three hours detention? Ano ang ibig sabihin noon, Mr. Solano? Actually, ano lang yon parang out of taranta. Tinanong ko kung three hours ba yung detention. Question. Clarification about regulatory period. Mr. Solano, opo. Question. Clarification kung si Arvin din ang nag-utos, nag-uutos na deactivate niya yung account, yung chat group nila. Mr. Solano, opo. Question. Siya ang presidente. Mr. Solano, si Arvin po. Question. Walang remorse doon sa apat noong nag noong pagpunta mo, hindi man sila mukhang, Mr. Solano, parang nataranta lang. End. Oh, my, my, my question is, I'm glad that uh, Attorney uh, Pat Ismakel no, uh, mentioned earlier na yun, hindi magsisinungaling at baya ang bumagsak yung acts where it uh, must fall, ano? And uh, I presume na yung pa rin yung position nyo sa ngayon. Hindi po ba, Atty. Uh, Jan? Yan pa rin ang position nyo. Na hindi kayo magsisinungaling. Yes, Your Honor. But at the proper time, as you said. Uh, yes po, Your Honor. At the proper time po. Pero ito na yung proper time. Nandiyan na yung testimony mo eh. And uh, ito, part of the uh, matter of public record na ito. Because this is public hearing. And the chairman the chairpersons of this uh, joint uh, committee uh, inauthorized na ng uh, Senate as a body. So there's no point uh, not testifying anymore because after all, in due time or pagdating na October 24, pagtawag ng hearing ulit sa preliminary investigation, well, more or less, as you indicated in your, in your letter, o yung mga material points, yun din yung testify mo, di ba? Yun sinabi mo. So, halos ganito, rin, halos ganito rin yung testify mo. Wala halos magbabago. Di ba? Yes, Sir Honor. Ang question ko lang is, din, is this the way, hypothetically ito, hindi ito directed uh, actually sa inyo because you're not involved here naman sa, sa initiation right. Ano? But is this the way to treat a frat? Frat? Iiwanan? Tapos yung isang tumulong, babayaan na lang? Is that the way to treat a, uh, a brad? Uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chairman, before I start again, I would like to reiterate my uh, expression of uh, deep sadness for the loss of Atrio and my deepest sympathies uh, to the family of the, Cas the Castillo family. Well, that's not supposed to be. It is not uh, in keeping with uh, with decency, basic decency, Your Honor. It should not have been done. Facing the first place, should not have been done. More so in that particular case, Your Honor. Huwag na si Atyo, pwede niyong sabihin, hindi pa naman ito talagang full-blooded na Brad kasi hindi naman natapos yung education right. Or kung natapos man, hindi naman siya nag-undergo ng the formalities of being a formal, uh, or a, a, be, being a member, hindi ba? Huwag na, yun na lang ginawa kay John uh, Paul Tulano. Uh, napakalaking injustice naman. I'd like to ask the other members, the other frat members who are present, uh, Jose Miguel Salamat, is this the way to treat a uh, full-blooded fraternity uh, brother? Yeah, tanong ko lang kung ito yung uh, what are you incriminating? Tinatanong ko lang, just like the question that I asked uh, of Dean uh, Divina, tinatanong ko lang personal opinion, ito ba yung kasi frat member ka eh? 
Kung ikaw ang tratuhin ng tulad ng pagtrato kay John Paul Solana, how would you feel? These are hypothetical questions. So, I don't see any reason why you should invoke your right against self-incrimination. Like the way. Which is? That. Uh, Zimon? Same question. Is that the way to treat a fraternity brother? No, po, your... yeah, hindi ba? The others, kindly, uh, sa susunod. Ayron. Hypothetically, your people. Hypothetically. How about in reality? Considering in the same scenario, your own. Definitely not treat that way. Arvin? No po, Your Honor. Ralph? No po. Jason? No, Your Honor. Nandito. Yeah, Oliver? Si Ren. So, nagkap, ikaw Ren. Ren po, Your Honor. And Mark? So mali ang ginawa ng mga dinatnan ni John Paul Sulano doon sa uh, frat life, di ba? Sabi ko, wag na na munang pag-usapan yung kay Atyo. Although, lalong masama yung nagawa sa kanya kasi dapat kinosida na rin siyang frat brad eh. Nag-undergo na siya ng uh, initiation right. I, I suppose, yun na yung final right eh. So wag na lang muna yun. Yung eto buhay si John Paul Sulano. So, nagkakaisa tayo, hindi dapat ganun ang pagtrato. Eh, bakit ganun ang naging trato? In fact, alam nyo, this is a redacted copy, you know. May mga portions doon na hindi na namin sinabi dahil for, for brevity, you know, dahil hahaba yung iba doon, medyo mga informalities. And pati yung hinaing ni John Paul Solano, pati yung kanyang lawyer, yung sama ng loob niya, nilabas niya doon, na hindi dapat, isipin mo, Brad din nyo, nati, natiis nyo na natutulog sa waiting shed. Kung saan abuti ng gabi doon, matutulog, matutulog sa labas ng eskulahan. Tumakay ng bus, hindi alam ang direksyon. Pag nakakita ng jeep, sasakay ng jeep. Kung saan barangay makarating, doon na lang siya abutin. Just imagine what he went through, yung ordeal. Tapos iniwan nyo doon sa hospital. Anyway, as he said, at the proper time, pagdating na October 24, and I hope you won't change your mind as you, as you did. Kasi ang pangako mo sa amin, uh, wag lang matuloy yung inquest. Diba? And uh, yung, prosecutor, uh, yung mga prosecutors dito, diba, you were released upon inquest. Dapat, doon pa lang, diba nakaka-assuage ng ang uh, sentimento ng mga magulang kung sakaling in all the way mo na yung ginawa mo pagtulong dito. Pinakita namin, simpatya namin sa'yo. Actually, na, ang simpatya namin nasa iyo eh. At that time, when you, as you were testifying before us, during the executive session, we all felt for you. So kami bleeding heart sa iyo. Pero ngayon, as mentioned by Senator Subiri, parang, bakit nagkaganon? And sabi nga ni Senator Gatchelian, what's your purpose para mag-file ng motion to quash search warrant? Ano ba yung mga defects ng warrant? Uh, Chief Superintendent uh, Coronel, ano ba yung mga defects ng warrant na sinasabi nung... Sir, in the application for the search warrant made by the Manila Police District, uh, it was inadvertently indicated in the application that this uh, warrant was purposes of violation of Section 28 of the anti-hazing law of 8049. Uh, when in truth and in fact, the uh, applicant meant its violations of section 2 and 4. So it is a typographical error on our part, which have we already manifested, manifested before the court regarding this. And uh, we have been informed that uh, what is the controlling, uh, uh, the controlling part on the application of Marat is the text and the body of the application indicating that the search warrant was applied for specifically violations of anti-hazing law indicating the name, the place, 
and the persons which uh, subject of the search warrant and the properties or items to be seized, confiscated, or recovered. Honor. PG, Catalan, what do you make of this uh, testimony, assuming that he affirms the same testimony on October 24th? Your Honor, um, at this I'm point... preempting your... Uh, the, the resolution that you... Yes, Your that Honor, your we, we will might make, preempt uh, the resolution, but at this point, Your Honor, may we request that a copy, a certified copy of, of this uh, document be furnished so that we can uh, have it. na lang kayo. Si Attorney Kapuna na lang tatanungin ko. <laughs> Para, of course, that's one-sided also. But later on, I'll also ask the uh, the lawyers of the uh, frat members here kung ano yung uh, ano tingin nila. Uh, of course, assuming that he affirms the same testimony or at least yung material point. Attorney Kapuna. This is the first time that you read this uh, this testimony? Yes, Your Honor. So what do you make of this? I think this is uh, valuable information, Your Honors, towards uh, finding what really happened. Certainly, we would request as well a certified true copy, if not from the police authorities. If I may add... Not uh, just valuable information, valuable evidence. Evidence, Your Honor. If I, I'm very careful with my words, Your Honor, because uh, there seems to be a tendency to file libel cases against lawyers, make public statements, and I confirm for the record that Dean Devina has already filed two libel cases against us, Your Honor, just for speaking on behalf of uh, parents, Your Honor. And I hope that does not happen to all lawyers here. Because if there are 40 lawyers Representing 40 respondents, Your Honor, uh, there may be a concern. There may be a chilling effect. You know? On behalf of the parents, uh, maybe there should be immunity uh, for the parents and for the lawyers for the statements made in this Senate investigation. Senator Gachelian. Here. Uh, uh, General Corey. Um, October 2, nagpadala ho kayo ng letter requesting for technical assistance sa Philippine Cyber Crime Group. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And um, <clears throat> the letter pertains to <clears throat> the letter pertains to a request from your office to provide technical assistance for the exploitation of information on social media accounts of the suspects involved in the death of Horacio Castillo III. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, General, can you give us a um, a overview of uh, what transpired after the technical assistance uh, provided by the uh, PNP Anti-Cybercrime Group? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, during the course of the investigation of this hazing incident, we were in receipt of several information, uh, particularly social media uh, communication or exchanges of information, uh, which we believe to have been... Uh, 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 published or reported or uh, communicated by members of AGS Juris fraternity members uh, pertaining to the incident of the uh, initiation and hazing of Asho Castillo. So there were two threads which submitted to the Anti-Cyber Crime Unit of the Philippine National Police for verification, authentication, and validation. And in these uh, social media exchanges of information, uh, it was indicated that uh, several fraternity members, not only residents but also alumni, were aware of the incident of Axo, uh, of the death of Axo Castillo, even on the early morning, in the early hours of the morning of uh, September uh, 17, when uh, Axo was brought to Chinese General Hospital. And uh, because of this, we submitted it to the Anti Cyber Crime Unit for uh, examination and evaluation, Your Honor. Thank you, General. And subsequently, <laughs> also, there were also um, social media chatter about a um, discussion in. Hotel. Yes, um, General. I yes, think Your that Honor. That was also the subject matter of the letter that you requested from uh, uh, the anti cybercrime group. Yes, uh, is Your that Honor. Correct, uh, General? Yes, Your Honor. Can you elaborate uh, further on that uh, account? Yes, sir. Apparently, a uh, uh, social chat page or Facebook page was put up by members of the AGS Juris fraternity discussing the ways, means, and uh, actions that they have to take regarding the investigation of Acho Castillo. And uh, we have monitored that several members of this fraternity uh, met in a 
meeting at uh, Novoto Hotel purposely to discuss their actions to be, take, to be taken in this investigation. Uh, based on the exchange of communication from these uh, fraternity members, it would appear that the tendency of the fraternity to conceal or to obstruct justice is very evident. Uh, when they would like to evade, avoid at all costs the uh, investigation and prosecution of this case, Your Honor. General, isa -isa natin, ah. So, nakuha niyo information from uh, Facebook uh, chat messages. Yes, Your Honor. And you uh, asked the anti-cybercrime group to validate this uh, chat messages. Yes, Your Honor. Sino -sino po yung mga nasa chat message? Uh, we have submitted uh, it to the committee. For the information yes, of Central Gatsalian, we have a PowerPoint uh, presentation of the uh, Facebook chat that transpired, uh, as you mentioned, to Central and and dito yung mga thread nila. You're ready. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think it's better to uh, look at the uh, presentation, Mr. AG's Juries Chat Messages, September 17 to 18, 2017. Attorney Marvi Abo, Ryan Bang, Attorney Cecilio Jimeno, Attorney Alston Kevin Anarna. For the record, ito yung mga nag-participate sa chat. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Attorney Ferdinand Rogelio, Attorney Edsel Bert Canlas, Attorney Cesar Ocampo Ona, Arvin Balag, Jose Miguel Salamat, Attorney Gail Dante Acuzar Caraan, Attorney Henry Pablo Jr., Attorney Michael Vito, Attorney Cesar Mong Gaba de la Fuente, Attorney Nino Cervanes, Ronald Cheng, Attorney Manuel Angelo Ventura III, Milfen Alvarado, Attorney Jet de la Peña Villaroman. Chair? Mr. Sibiri. Chair, actually, we've been, the committee has been receipt of this, uh, um, screenshots. Uh, chat uh, group that was, uh, I believe, very active during the morning of Sunday. And um, we'd like to direct the Manila Police District together with the investigating group to take a look at these screenshots, verify to your uh, um, anti-cybercrime unit to verify these accounts in Facebook and to uh, see if these are actual persons, who they are, uh, what circumstances they're in. I believe uh, most of them are lawyers. Kaya, Your Honor, Mr. Chairman, kung ganito po ang ating mga future lawyers at yung mga abogado po natin, active in cover-ups of crimes, I'm sorry for the law profession. I really do. So, uh, we direct the committee to come up with a report as well uh, on these uh, screenshots of these group chats because um, it's the points being raised there, I read it one time uh, last week, Mr. Chairman, the points being raised there are a matter of uh, obstruction of justice and, and clearly a cover-up. Pero po dyan messages na si inutusan po isang tao na erase ang CCTV footage na bayaran kung kailangan bayaran yung barangay officials para makuha yung CCTV footage. Uh, obviously, this is an obstruction of justice, a clear cover-up of the investigation. Uh, so we'd like to direct the Manila Police District to look uh, further into this. We'll give you all the information. Uh, hopefully, uh, truth will come out on this. Uh, General? Yes, sir. Uh, we, are, uh, we have submitted already these uh, initial findings to Facebook Philippines and uh, we're waiting for validation in order that the same may be used in evidence in court, if ever. Uh, with the kind intelligence of centers. Mr. Chair, this is the first time I've actually seen the, I've seen the memo, no? but I haven't seen the exact conversation. Maybe 
uh, request the secretary to just give us a a, a very brief um, synopsis of uh, the chat that went through during that time. Siguro i highlight na lang yung uh, mga importante na mga chat messages. Now, earlier on, after the testimony was made public of uh, John Paul Solano, I believe Prosecutor General Jorge Catalan Jr. had wanted to make a statement. Um, Attorney Catalan, uh, you wanted to make a statement earlier. You were raising your hands. Yeah, I, I, I am just uh, requesting that a certified uh, copy of this uh, document be uh, furnished so that we can forward it to the uh, panel and the panel would uh, likewise evaluate and analyze the uh, admissibility of these uh, documents. Thank you, Your Honor. Before we continue the discussion and, and look at the PowerPoint, General, can you give us a timestamp nitong conversation na ito para at least everyone's on the same page? Kailan po nangyari itong uh, conversation? Uh, it appears, Your Honor, that the uh, conversation... Can you just uh, walk us through? Ah, yes, Familiar ka naman dito, di ba? As uh, it yes, is being presented, i-annotate mo na lang. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, it appears that the uh, one being appearing on the screen is the one uh, posted on some time in the early morning of uh, September 17, when uh, the report of, uh, when Acho Castillo was already uh, brought to the Chinese General Hospital and that uh, it was already confirmed that he's already dead. And also, if I may add, Your Honor, uh, we have received this information only about sometime first week of October, and I'm relating this in the context that in the early part of our investigation, sometime of September 19 or 20, I understand that the Aegis Juris Fraternity came out with a statement saying that they will fully cooperate with the investigation of this case. In fact, in their statement, uh, they promised full cooperation and they are reaching out and still doing so to the, mem to the family of the late uh, Horacio Castillo. And that uh, just like everyone, they would like to see justice to be served for the death of their brother Acho, and that they shared the anguish of their parents. And that in that context, in that Aegis Utility Fraternity Statement, we were hoping that they will come out and cooperate with us. I have already informed senior members of their fraternity, including the dean, that that's the objective of our investigation. But then uh, in light of the discovery of these chat messages, it appears that from Sunday, September 17, the objective of the Aegis Utility Fraternity is to cover up conceal, to avoid and evade the prosecution of this case. So that is the context of these messages, Your Honor. Okay. <clears throat> so this is, uh, it consists of about 38 pages, 38 slides. Uh, in summary, sir, if I may. Yes, sir. Of these uh, chat messages pertain pertaining to the early morning of September 17, there were 30, 30 personalities uh, mentioned or included in the message thread. Of the 30 personalities, 19 of them attended the meeting at Novotel on September 17, 2017, purposely to discuss the actions to be taken by Aegis Juris Fraternity relating to the casing incident uh, leading to the death of Acho Castillo. Of the 19 attendees, uh, we were able to identify 12 of them. Uh, through their uh, Facebook pages or social uh, media uh, information. Uh, of these, uh, 12, seven are, uh, of the 12, seven, seven are still subject for identification. Uh, six were mentioned by the informants uh, of the, relating to this information or thread. And as I mentioned earlier, this chat started in the early morning, in the early morning of September 17. Uh, the group messenger or chat page was created by uh, attorney Marvi Rosero Abu, who was the one who spearheaded or initiated this exchange of thread, asking uh, members of the Aegis Utility Fraternity to hold the meeting and in order to discuss the actions to be taken by the fraternity. So as shown uh, earlier, uh, we were able to uh, gather the identities, uh, mostly of those who were involved in the thread. Uh, and also identities of those who were added but did not participate in the conversation. Sir. Yes, 
So mostly if you're going to review uh, each and individual exchanges of uh, communication between, uh, between these um, Aegis Juris member fraternity, fraternity members, uh, it would appear that uh, they intend to uh, uh, cover up the incident. Uh, contrary to their announcement made on September 19, that uh, they would are willing to face uh, the investigation and support the uh, authorities in the conduct of the investigation. In fact, a uh, majority of them said that, that they will uh, uh, find ways and means to uh, see that the evidence that will be uh, gathered or recovered by the investigating authorities shall not be, uh, won't no longer be available to the PNP or to those who are conducting the investigation. Then, General Sandalila, yes, sir. can we go back uh, one slide? <coughs> uh, the other slide, the slide before. Okay, doon, may nakalag-highlight doon, uh, pinauwi. Ito, pinauwi ko na P.P. Arvin sa Subic sa hospital. <coughs> clearly, they know what transpired and they're clearly 